Okay, uh, good evening everybody. How's everybody doing today? Good. 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 <laughs> good, good. good, very good, extremely good. Thank you so much for being here. Um, tonight, we're gonna study um, some facts of ancient life and modern life in relation to the the celebration that we are about to enjoy this coming weekend, that is Purim, okay? The Feast of Esther, or the celebration of Purim, or Purim. The Purim means uh, lots, but also means, uh, it has the idea of chances, okay? Chances, like if you read the book of Esther, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a book that uh, talks about chances. You know, it's, it's amazing. There are so many, um, how do you say in English, odds, mm -hmm. things, like Haman, you know, preparing this, uh, the, the gallows, you know, the rope, because he was playing to hang Mardukai. But the rope was used for him, you know. I mean, things that are um, just uh, uh, things that you don't expect, okay. And but before we start, I just want to show off because I want this to be recorded. I show it to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today I got this beautiful present. Beautiful present. It's it's amazing. Look at it's kind of like a three dimensional. Yeah, it's Moshe Havinu here. Uh, it's a metal, it's a metal plaque, uh, and it's, uh, wow, it's just a beautiful work of art in here with the Hebrew Torah, the Hebrew letters Torah, mm -hmm. and then you open the, the, the Luchot, or the tablets, okay, and you have, it's, it's just a, like a work of art. Um, mm -hmm. They have the book of Berachit, or Genesis, they have Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, so the five books of the Torah, and I got this present today. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. The young man that gave me this present is sitting over there. He doesn't want to be seen. <laughs> Isaac. Uh, Yitzhak. Yeah, Isaac. <clears throat> Thank you, Isaac. Yeah. So, okay, the book of Esther, let's go. Um, actually, I'm gonna read this. <coughs> This uh, copy that I found in my in my files, like I said a few minutes ago, this has been in my files for almost 17, 18 years. Somebody gave it to me, and I'm going to read it to you, because the book of Esther, or Hadassah, you know, the proper name of uh, the Queen Esther, Queen Hadassah, uh, is a book... Um, amazingly, that is the only book that was not found in the books that were found uh, in, in, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Qumran Scrolls. Have you heard about that? Yes. This, this, uh, this scrolls that were found around 1948, that uh, all this collection of sacred writings... <clears throat> Uh, all the books of the prophets, the Torah, and all their other writings were found in 1948. But the only book that was excluded from that huge library, that were the, the, the Essenians, okay, this sect, of Jewish sect, uh, the only book that was not found was the book of Esther. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And some believe that uh, uh, that was just... Uh, you know, an accident, they, some believe that uh, uh, they gave us different different uh, reasons. But one of the main reasons is because the Essenians, they were so uh, uh, fundamentalist in their beliefs that they didn't see the name of, of God, the name of Hashem, in the book, and they, they put it aside. Yeah. Okay? But the book is so powerful and so prophetic that I believe is one of the most, uh, talking about prophecy a few minutes ago, yeah. 
is one of the most prophetic books that we can actually uh, relieve in our generation. Okay? How many decades ago we had the Nazi movement in Europe? About 80 years ago. Close to 80 years. About 80 years. <coughs> okay. And we, we have studied about how the modern Nazis uh, in Jewish um, modern interpretation um, is believed that they are the modern descendants of the Amalekites. Mm, remember the Amalekites? When we left Egypt, these uh, evil guys um, attack us, you know, on our backs, and they kill the innocents, the, 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 our grandpas, grandmas, children, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, women. Mm -hmm. So, you know, something, it, it, it's kind of like uh, very similar to a story that we just live. On October the seventh, two thousand twenty-three. Remember what happened October the seventh, two thousand twenty-three. Yes. When these uh, uh, despicable creatures, uh, the so-called uh, Palestines, that they are not Palestines, um, they just adopted that, that name. They they did the same that the Amalekites did. They just start killing infants, uh, raping, behaving, behaving um, young, elderly, everything. Yeah. So nothing new under the sun. So um, and let me read just for you this that I have in my in my notes here. This couple pages. This article is called Fighting Iron with Irony. Okay? <clears throat> and it says, A contemporary plurium story by Rabbi Avi Shafran, Amechal Resources, February 8, 2002. So this is an all, all, all writing mm -hmm. that this rabbi uh, wrote, and I'm just going to read it tonight. Okay? On a, beautiful, on a beautiful clear night in 1924, at Landsberg Am Lech, where, where he was imprisoned by the Bavarian government, Adolf Hitler, and may his name be raised, remarked to Rudolf Hess, and this is what Hitler said, you know, it's only the moon I hate. Words of Hitler. You mentioned something about the sun representing the Gentiles, mm -hmm. the moon representing the Jews, this is the, the idea in Judaism. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Hitler said, you know, it's only the moon I hate, for it is something dead and terrible and inhuman. It is as if there still lives in the moon a part, a part of the terror it once sent down to earth. I hate it. A shill accompanied my first encounter with that quote because the Jewish religious tradition sees the ever rejuvenating shining disk of the moon as a symbol of the Jewish people. Indeed, the very first commandment we Jews were given as a people while still awaiting the exodus in Egypt, was to identify ourselves through our calendar with the moon. The same moon Hitler feared and hated. Not something. There is much other oddness about Hitler with connections to ancient Jewish tradition. Things like his fondness 
for ravens. In Jewish lore, associated with cruelty. He went so far as to issue special orders protecting the birds when he was reigning. And like his fascination with the art of Franz von Stock. You know who was that guy? Well, read about him. Franz von Stock. S-T-U-C-K. In parentheses, the artist who had the greatest impact on his life, he once said, whose major themes are snakes and sinister women. In the Jewish mystical tradition, snakes evoke evil in its embodiment, Amalek. And there are hints of an anti-ethical relationship between the irredeemable wickedness of Amalek and evil women. Remember what Bilam used? Mm -hmm. Women. Yeah. And then there is the matter of the most loathsome of Hitler's henchmen. Julius Streicher. That name should be familiar to you because we mention this guy every single year in Purim. Julius Streicher. Who was Julius Streicher? He was the editor of Der Stürmer the premier journal of Jewish biting. Jewish biting? Biting. Mm -hmm. Jew biting. So this guy was the, the leader. He was member of the board of Hitler. Actually, he was among the 10 that were hanged in the trial of Nuremberg in 1948. Remember when mm -hmm. all these leaders, yes. uh, Nazi leaders were, uh, yeah. were judged? Yeah. So... He was the, uh, the secretary or the leader of um, uh, propaganda. He owned the media, basically, back then. Yeah, exactly, like CNN today, you know, like yeah. MSNBC, and, and all these modern Julius Streicher's uh, media personalities. Yeah, exactly, just like that. <clears throat> okay. Julius Streicher, the editor the, of Der Sturmer, I'm speaking German, no? mm -hmm. the premier journal of Jew biting. At its peak in 1938, print runs of Streicher's vile tabloid ran as high as 2 million. A typical offering included a close up of the face of a deformed Jew above the legend, in quotation marks, the scum of humanity. Beautiful. This Jew says that he is a member of God's chosen people. That's with irony. Another display of a cartoon of a vampire bat with a grotesquely exaggerated nose. Okay. And I grab mine. <laughs> <laughs> And a Jewish start on its chest. And yet another, a Jewish butcher, was depicted snidely dropping a rat into his meat grinder. And elsewhere in the issue, the punctured necks of handsome young German were shown bleeding into a bowl held by the Jew. More gargoyle. Gargoyle? Gargoyle? You know what a gargoyle, gargoyle is? Yeah, gargoyle. Mm -hmm. Than a human. <clears throat> remind me to show you, remind me to show you, oh, where is this? These two books that I have here, that I highly recommend it to you in a moment. Actually, I want to mention this in a moment. Um, where am I? Okay. In 1935, speaking to a close meeting of a Nazi student organization, Julius Streicher, displaying an inarguably Amalekian approach, declared. This is what Julius Streicher said. Okay. All are and this guy was a short guy. I think he was shorter than me. <laughs> but it's not something. It's not about the muscles. It's not about the, <laughs> you know. It's about the power these people get from Satan. 
in the dark agenda. Same thing with us, the children of light. It's not about your muscles, it's not about your physical, it's not about how cute you are, you know. Uh, yeah, it's about the power we represent, the power is behind us, next to us, above us, under us, inside of us. <laughs> it's who, who we are. We're people of light, children of God. Mm? Mm -hmm. What people see outside is it's just a mere illusion. <laughs> Of what we really are as the creatures of light. <clears throat> he declared, Judas Straker, all our struggles are in vain if the battle against the Jews is not fought to the finish. Remember the finance solution? Mm, mm -hmm. well, he was one of the main guys there. Mm -hmm. It is not enough to get the Jews out of Germany. Wow, mm -hmm. sounds familiar? Mm -hmm. Yeah. From the river to the sea. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there was there was uh, this quotation by an ignorant um, idiot on Facebook uh, with this thing, you know, from the river to the sea, uh, we're going to... Huh? Yeah, Palestine is Palestine. going to succeed, something like that. Yeah. yeah, something like that. And, and you know what? It's one of those times I, I never reply, I never get involved in discussions in Facebook because it's just wasting of time. You don't even know the person, you know, you don't right. get involved in that thing. But it's one of the times, there's these times that I was like, oh, okay, because I saw so many likes. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be the first dislike. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got, you know, my. And I said, thank you so much for reminding us the promise that the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gave us that the borders of the Holy Land is from the river to the sea. <laughs> oh, I almost yeah, put good. imbecile. <laughs> you idiot. So they don't even know what they are chanting. Right. What they are saying is, we recognize that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gave you, the Jews, the board, the, the, you know, the, the limits, yeah. from the river to the sea. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Maybe my blood boils a little hotter than yours. Mm -hmm. No, it boils. But at the end, mm -hmm. I know yours boils too. Yeah. Did you, did you know that they had a march here in El Paso? It was so bad. Mm -hmm. Do you see Fort Bliss, the military base? Yes. Yes. What they wrote on, on, on the sign, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. concrete sign, yeah. uh, from the river to the, to the sea. 30,000 dead. Young. You know that, do you know where they get this number of 30,000 so-called Palestinians dead? Hamas. From Hamas. Made it up. And I'm surprised that Hamas <laughs> didn't say, oh no, one million have died. You know? uh -huh. of, of course, yeah. they, they are the ones that are giving all these numbers. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Huh? They did that here in Fort Bliss? Yes. They, they put graffiti yeah, on this on the oh, sign. Graffiti. And I think Ivanez, oh, God bless <laughs> Daniel Ivanez. If you're watching, He's Danny, Hashem bless your heart. Yeah. I think it was Daniel that he you put know. another picture before and after. <laughs> he, he put two flags of Israel and yes. they painted, oh, no. they repainted, you know, the, yeah. the, the sign. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean the, the, oh. that graffiti is gone now. And they put two flags of Israel. Baruch Hashem. So, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So, um, all our struggles are in vain if the battle against the Jews is not fought to the finish. Remember the creed of Hamas. If you don't have access in Google, because maybe they removed this, but I have it in a copy, okay? Uh, I can send it to you. Just remind me. And give me time to find it. Um, I have it on a piece of paper. Uh, the creed of Hamas. Do you know what they, what they have here in their? They're like a bandana. The green bandana that they put to their kids. Mm -hmm. they, they they give this teddy bears and they give their knives and the little babies. You know the toddlers. They are the decapitating tod uh, these teddy bears. Have you seen those videos? Yes. No. Yeah, with well, the teddy bear has the star of David, you know, with Sharpie. Oh. I don't know how they mm -hmm. put it there. You know? So they have here, we hate death 
as much as the Jews had, had, had uh, love life. That's what they have in there. We hate death as much the Jews love life. Just think about it. So, and you are making a, a peace treaty and all this. No, it's a nonsense. It's a nonsense. They don't want nonsense. Peace. <clears throat> yeah. This is an ideology. This is not something that is going to be sold by a signature, you know, nothing. Else. And then the creed of Hamas, they said, we are not going to rest until we get rid, we get rid of all the Jews mm -hmm. Ooh, in the world. Yeah. And, the world. Mm -hmm. and the planet. It's not that they want the land, it's just an excuse. Right. They don't have history, 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 kings and coins. There is nothing there they can claim. Actually, I don't know if you know, but this, this name Palestinian, it was the emperor, I think it was Hadrian, emperor, in the 1930, I mean, in, in, in 135th, that he renamed the land Palestinian. But actually, he made a mistake because he renamed it Palestinian, but that wasn't the name when the original Philistines lived there thousands of years ago that the, you go to history and to the most recent DNA test of all the skeletons they have found in the land for thousands of years, the most recent in Europe, this DNA uh, testing, okay, the original Philistines were Greeks. All the artifacts were Greeks. <laughs> all the paintings were Greeks. So, they are called Palestinians because the land was called Palestinian since Adrian, mm -hmm. about 1850 years ago. Right. But that land before Adrian, for thousands of years, was called Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. The original indigenous people of the land. Oh, by the way, in this testing, they found Semitic Semitic uh, uh, DNA and Hebrew DNA, but they didn't find so-called uh, Arab or so-called Palestinian DNA. And this is recent, about two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everybody's believing the lie that they are the, oh, they are the original Palestinians. Hmm. It's amazing how ignorance kills you yes. and propaganda mm -hmm. re-kills you. So, it is not enough, says, continue, uh, Julius Reicher says, it is not enough to get the Jews out of Germany. No, they must be destroyed throughout the entire world. It sounds familiar? Mm -hmm. ah, Hamas, Hezbollah. So that humanity will be free of them. I got bad news for you guys. <laughs> God says to the prophets, as long as the sun shines, as long as the moon comes out, you know, every, every new moon, the people of Israel will live forever. Am Israel chai. The people of Israel will live forever. Forever. If you don't understand it in plain English, I stick to you in South African or New Zealand English, Australian English. <laughs> we'll live forever. Yeah. The suspicion that in Streicher's blind, baseless, and absolute hatred of the Jews lay the legacy of Amalek yeah. Yeah. makes the story of this capture, of his capture and death, nothing short of chilling. Purim is the only Jewish holiday that celebrates the defeat of an Amalekite, mm -hmm. Haman mm -hmm. or Haman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even a passing familiarity with the Purim story is sufficient to know that the downfall of this villain is saturated with, with what seem to be chance ironies. Okay. He turns up at the wrong place at the wrong time, and all that he's all that he's uh, and all that he so carefully plans eventually comes. To backfire yeah. on him in an almost comical way. That's true. 
a theme the book of Esther characterizes with the words Benahafohu, that means, and it was turned upside down. Yeah. I, 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 I have it on the tip of my tongue to share a story with you of some evil people that did something so evil to me and my wife and my family when we were in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. And I would be more than happy that these evil people is watching this video. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that they can remember how evil they were. I hope they, they did the shuba. Mm -hmm. I hope they repented, believe me. That they created all this evil uh, gossip. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Similar to the one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because the same thing. Jealousy, envy. They can't handle it. That when somebody asks me for my wife. How is your wife? She was beautiful. These people, jealous. They, they, this is jealous. Jealous is horrible. Envy is horrible. Yeah? And these people couldn't handle it. And they created all this gossip around me and my family that it, they even took us to court. Mm -hmm. Six months of court. <clears throat> Just a year, year after that court, I, ha I collapsed. Collapsed is when I had my problem with my chest pain. Mm -hmm. I have shared this story with you. <clears throat> that I experienced this, uh, this death. Basically, <laughs> silence. <laughs> um, um, because that was that was so much stress accumulated, and and I remember the last day of court. I wrote on my I wrote in a piece of paper because the last day of my court with my wife and all these these two people just accusing us of infamous horrible things. Okay, I'm going to mention, so you can have an idea. I'm just going to mention a little bit. Okay? They got so full of hatred, like Amalek, like a Haman, that they said that my wife had a knife on her purse. Now I can say it smiling, believe me. And every service that we had in the synagogue, my wife was outside waiting for the elderly to get their money from their... <laughs> Oh so, <laughs> so you can have an idea how evil and how stupid these people were. I mean, they couldn't have imagination to create a better story. So when the judge, the last, the last uh, witness, and you know, uh, they gave the the judge just look at uh, you know, the, 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 the the written form that he had. And he just smiled. So you mean this lady had a knife? And he just laughed. You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the case is closed. Uh, you know, everybody goes to their house. And, so, but how evil can people be? Okay. And you're talking about an elderly of 70, 72 years old that was the one that created all this evil stuff. Because jealous. Mm -hmm. Envy. Mm -hmm. But six months of torture. When my last day, I got my Sharpie and I was so confident that I was, I, God, you are with me. And you know that all this is just fake stuff. It's... it's, it's it's, it's just unbelievable. I got my Sharpie. And what day was that one? Remember? Purim. Purim. Oh my goodness. That was the day of Purim. Wow. And I just wrote Feast of Purim. We won with my Sharpie. Mm -hmm. When the judge called me, I got up and I turned to my, the whole congregation behind me and I did this. I showed them. Mm -hmm. And, and I never thought that in the court there's cameras. Oh my gosh, you know. Well, I took the chance anyways, but I did what I did, you know. So, Feast of Purim, uh, Esther, uh, Esther, Feast of Purim, we won. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, Haman hang himself that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, Haman didn't, need, didn't even need help that day. <laughs> so, and... For the people that might be watching this video that are from here, from the particularly West El Paso, that have invented all kinds of stuff like that, you know, similar stuff from this so-called synagogue in the West El Paso, uh, I'm telling you, ay, 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 I'm so concerned about you because what you prepare for the righteous is reserved for you.
and you know that you did wrong, and you know that you did evil. I hope you shuba, you, you do shuba. I hope so. So, everything turns down, turns upside down, okay? Such chains happening are the very hallmark of Amalek's defeat, a fact reflected in the casting of lots, from which Purim takes its name. Chance, Esther teaches us, is an illusion. God's, God is, God is in charge. I mean, things don't happen by chance. Okay? Amalek may fight with iron, but he is defend, defeated with irony. I like this, with this rabbi wrote. This is not me, mine. Eh? I'm writing from this uh, rabbi, uh, Avi Shafran. <clears throat> it was written in 2002, about 12, 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's a long time. As was Streicher, Julius Streicher, this Nazi, in the days after Germany's final defeat, an American major, listen to this story. <coughs> an American major, Henry Blit, sounds familiar to you? <coughs> Blit, it sounds like an American last name, like no. an English last name. German. Henry Blit, on route to Berchtesgaden, a little German town. Berchtesgaden. Huh? Berchtesgaden. Oh my goodness, okay, help me to pronounce that. Berges Gotten. Berges Gotten? Nein. Nein. Okay. Well, Henry Bleed, I mean, this was almost at the same time, you know, when the war, the war, Second World War ended. And they were capturing all these Nazis. They are hiding. Henry Bleed, he was a, a, a member of the American um, army. And route to, okay, can you pronounce again? Berchtesgaden. Okay. <laughs> and on route to Berchtesgaden, made an unplanned stop at the fate of the farmhouse just off the road. It was occupied by a short bearded man. It wasn't me. <laughs> okay. And Major Henry Bleed asked, this man, because it seems like a, this major had that uh, habit, you know, to ask every single person, Germans, you know, about what do you think about, mm -hmm. about the Nazis, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to hear your opinion. You are German. So. And he asked this short man with long beard, what do you think of the Nazis? Bleed asked. And this short guy said, um, oh, I am an artist, came the reply, and have never bothered about politics. But you look like Julius Streicher, Bleed yeah. joked. He made a uh -oh. joke. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Be careful when somebody makes a joke with you. Don't take it so serious. Mm -hmm. Trying to make a conversation. And Streicher answered, you recognize me. Oh. It was Julius Streicher. Wow. This, this is the way he was caught. Wow. Dressing as a farm guy. Mm -hmm. You recognize me? The man blurted out incredul incredulously. Mm -hmm. Startling blit who managed to compose himself and arrested this guy. Look at this. Major Blit, incidentally, was Jewish. Wow. Was a member of the American army? Yes. But he was a Jewish American. Mm -hmm. This history. Think about if our children can listen to this modern history today, in today's schools. They are deprived of so much. 
Another happy irony in Streicher's life involved the fate of his considerable estate, as reported in Stars and Stripes in late 1945, his considerable possessions were converted to cash and used to create an agricultural training school for Jews intending to settle in Palestine. Mm -hmm. What an irony. Yeah. Just as Haman's riches, as recorded in the Book of Esther, were bestowed upon his nemesis Mordechai. Yeah. There is a good deal more of interest in the life of Julius Streicher to associate him with Jewish traditions about Amalek. But one of the most shocking narratives about him is the one concerning his death. How many of you knew or remember how Julius Streicher, this despicable, inhuman, thing, <laughs> not even an animal, died? Huh? He was hanged? He committed suicide. Yeah, he was hanged. <clears throat> no, the one that committed suicide was um, <coughs> German Guring. Mm -hmm. German Guring, that he, he, he was... Uh, he was kind of like effeminate guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he dressed so nice. He was so obsessed with his clothes. Very nice looking. Big, but... but and, uh, uh, and the feminine, yeah? Purple? Huh? Purple? What was his name again? Feminine? No, what was his name? Oh, uh, German Guring. The one, this guy actually swallowed a cyanide capsule in prison. <clears throat> and that's why he died. I don't know how he got this. And that suicidal action also had some prophetic um, issues in regards of um, the ten sons of Haman that were hanged. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, okay, where, where am I? Streicher was one of those Streicher was one of was of one of the Nazis tried, convicted, and hanged in Nuremberg in 1946 after uh, World War ended. During the trial, Julius Streicher remained disgust, disgustingly true to form. When the persecution showed a film of the concentration camps. Have you ever seen those videos on YouTube? Yeah. <clears throat> Go to YouTube tonight and watch the trial of Nuremberg. Some of them are just... despicable people. Mm -hmm. When the persecution showed the film of the concentration camps as they had been found by the Allies, <clears throat> particularly the the Russians and the Americans, when the, the first ones and getting there, yeah. actually the first one were the Russians, yeah. and then the Americans, and then the British. A spotlight was left on the defendant's box for security reasons. Many present preferred to watch the defendant's reactions rather than the mounds of bodies. Matchstick limbs and common graves. No. <clears throat> Few of the defendants could bear to watch the film for long. German Guring seemed calm at first, but eventually began to nervously wipe his sweaty palms. It's hacked, turn away. Ribbentrop buried his face in his hands. Ketel wiped his red net eyes with a handkerchief. Wow, this guy at least had some remorse. Yeah. Amazing. Only Julius Streicher leaned forward throughout, looking anxiously at the film and excitedly nodding his head. 
It's like if he was watching a, a documentary, a fan documentary, you know, or something that is entertainment. Yeah. While no proof was found that Streicher had ever killed a Jew <coughs> by his own hand, the tribunal nevertheless decided that his clear cut incitement of others to the task constitute the act of a war criminal. And so he was sentenced, along with 10 other defendants, to hang. Yeah. Pay attention to this hanging. Why hanging? Why not execution, execution you know, shooting them shooting, yeah. or a lethal injection or giving them, I don't know, electric shake by Europe. Maybe they didn't have electric chairs, <laughs> even though. They had already electricity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But why hanging? Are we in modern in modern uh, times? This is way too cruel. Mm. Way too cruel. The mm -hmm. PC thing. Oh, you know, Julius Strecker, oh, he was beaten by his dad. That is why he has so much so many traumas. We have to forgive them. It's amazing mm -hmm. that today's And Jesus would forgive him. Huh? And Jesus would forgive Oh yeah, of course. Um, and Jesus will forgive everybody because we all are included in the kumbaya. Yeah. Kumbaya. Like this individual that is sitting in the throne in the in, in, in Rome. He's saying that everybody is included in the church. Well, in your church, my friend. Not in the congregation of, of the God of Israel. Not the Kahal Israel. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, everybody's included. Yeah. <clears throat> well, obviously he's talking about the the rainbow people, you know, the people that stole a rainbow you know, and eliminated one color. By the way, so so and the hang he did, and hang he did. But not before taking the opportunity to share a few final words with the journalists present at the gallows. Talking about Julius Streicher still, okay? When he was about to go to the gallows to be hanged, look at what he screamed. We, we, we heard this years ago. Yeah. He screamed and he said, Julius Streicher said, Heil Hitler, now I go to God. He announced, and then, just before the trap sprang open, he blurted out most clearly. Look at what he said, screaming and kicking while he was being hanged. Purim or Purim Feast, 1946. Wow. This is history, and I'm going to give you in a moment, <clears throat> the newspaper, because New York Times, mm -hmm. next day came with this um, news. Feast of Purim, 1946. Why did he scream that? It was a demon. <laughs> the demon <laughs> existed. He was a Malachite. The demons from Kremon. Um, it, it is in him, and he recognized it. <laughs> he knew the Bible. He knew the Book of Esther. Did you know that? Well, I, I better. I have so much notes here. Though. Um, an odd thing to say in any event, but especially so on a day like this. That was on October, nineteen forty-six. <clears throat> And the Gregorian canon. Mm -hmm. The Amalek irony of the Nuremberg trial executions doesn't end there. Either the Book of Esther recounts how Haman's ten sons were hanged in Shushan, an eleventh child, mm -hmm. because according to history, not the, the Torah, not the Bible, according to history, or in the, in the, in the Talmud, mentions that there was an eleventh child of Haman. Mm -hmm. But 
it was not a he, it was a she, it was a daughter, and she committed suicide. Isn't that something? <laughs> According to an account in the Talmud, the 11th child, this daughter of Haman, committed suicide. At Nuremberg, while 11 men were condemned to execution, escucha esto, by hanging, only 10 were actually hanged. So if 11 would have been hanged in Nuremberg, that is basically stretching the comparison with the Book of Esther. But if 10 were hanged, that means something. Because the children of Haman were 10 that were hanged, but actually were 11, one committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So here we have 11 guys in the trial of Nuremberg, 1945, 11 Nazis, and German Goering committed suicide. Now we have 10 mm -hmm. that were hanged, just like the book of Esther says. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, I'm not going to read the book. We're going to read it this coming uh, Sunday. And we're going to pay attention that when there is a part of the book of Esther where it says that the ten children of Haman were killed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then Esther, they were killed. Then Esther asked, actually you should read the book this week. And read in your in your in your mother tongue, English, or Spanish, or Hebrew. Well, if you read Hebrew, you're gonna you're gonna understand something greater. Than that. And then Esther or Hadassah asked for the bodies of the children of Haman to hang them. Oh yeah. But the phrase there in Hebrew is in future. Interesting. Are you getting the idea? Yes. I mean, this is amazing because read the book of Esther. It's a little book, you're gonna find it very quick, okay? Actually, particularly almost at the end, where these 10 guys were killed. And then she asked, Give me these 10 guys, I'm gonna hang them, but this is for the future. So 10 children of Haman, 10, the original founders of the Nazi movement, because they are the ancestors of the Nazis, descendants of Amalek, 10 were hanged, were killed. And then says that Esther asked, to hang them in the future. The Hebrew points to the future. And if you tell me another time in history where the Jewish people have been um, persecuted. persecuted, yes, and systematically been killed to the point to almost eradicate the Jews from this earth, which time or which two times are the times that are will be the most iconic times? Mm. And don't tell me Egypt because they were throwing our kids, mm -hmm. yeah. our kids to the to the to the Nile, to the river, to the crocodiles. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they were throwing the kids, mm -hmm. but they were they were not throwing the adults, the women. We survived it. Mm -hmm. The only two times have been in Purim. Read the book of Esther. He systematically, actually, he for more than one year, that's why the feast is called Purim. Mm -hmm. He was doing the, how do you say in Mexicano? In Mexico, the voladito. Uh, yeah. ah, ah. <laughs> he was doing the, lot, the lots. Yeah, casting the lots. And he wanted... He wanted the lot to fall in Pesach, actually, in Nisan, mm. to show that the God of Israel actually is fake, and this story about the Jews being delivered from Egypt is, is just a fake story. Mm. And that is why he wanted to get the coin, 
He wanted the quarter, you know, the, the, the George Washington fall, you know, facing up. <coughs> Let's put it that way. For one year, he said, no, no, no. That, I want Nissan, for, Nissan 14. Nissan 14. No, never. In felt in a dot. Is that something? But the worst time in history, there is no worse time in history of a massacre of the Jews than 80 years ago. You mention any time. Count the numbers of the dead by the Assyrians, by the Romans. Even the Romans were more merciful. Yeah. The Babylonians, the Egyptians. Six million people. Listen, it's, it's almost the amount of Jews that there are in the United States of America. 6.57 million. And that we know. Because remember, they kill Jews and they just threw them in you know, the forest, whatever. That we know. So, in our modern history, the Amalekite spirit still is alive. Still is alive. <coughs> and I'm going to show you something even more uh, uh, amazing here. Um, at Nuremberg, while 11 men were condemned to execution by hanging, only 10 were actually hanged. The 11, <laughs> the Fopich effeminate Guring died in his cell only hours before the execution. He had cr crushed a hidden cyanide capsule between his teeth. Mm. So Esther is an amazing prophetic book pointing to the 10 children of Amen that were going to be hanged in the worst time of the Jewish people in history. Where systematically we were about to be erased from the planet. Just 80 years ago, we still have people alive today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Alter Weiner. I was so close to this elder man. He wrote the book called More Than a Number. I have shared with you this story with this about uh, this gentleman, survive, a Holocaust survivor. He got in uh, mm -hmm. Treblinka, Auschwitz, Treblinka or Auschwitz, yeah, in Poland. When he was 13, he was freed by the Russians when he was 17. He was placed on rifle <clears throat> in his arm. And they put all the Nazis in, in this, in this uh, behind the fence. And now the Jews are free. And he told me with his own words, they put this rifle in my hands and they said, now your turn, kill these animals. Look at an animal telling him, to kill animals because these guys were, you know, Stalin, communists. Communists, they also behave like animals. So isn't that irony? Another irony. So they put the rifle in my hand. They say, kill them. And he said, I dropped the rifle. I couldn't do anything. I say, I can't kill these people. I can't pay them back the way they did to me. More than 180 something people. And people that are related to Mr. Alter Weiner. They, they know what I'm saying. More than 180 people, members of his family, he had to go to these huge halls and recognize their bodies. He actually recognized the body of his father, his mother, his grandfather. Stinky worms everywhere. They were disfigured. Think about it. 80 years ago, and we have all these stupid teachers teaching today in public schools. The Holocaust never happened. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a Julius Streicher. Huh? Mm -hmm. Propaganda, propaganda, propaganda. Amazing. Something I'm, gonna, I'm about to finish. 
Something even more striking was noted by the late uh, Belser Rebbe. In the scrolls of the book of Esther, the names of the ten sons, and I'm going to show you in a moment, I think I, I, I did this last year. <clears throat> the names of the ten sons of Haman are unusually prominent. Actually, when you read the names, I'm like, oh, you know, these names are son que feo nombres. Parsandata. Uh, oh like that, you know? I mean, who should, who, who picked these names? <laughs> yeah? Even their names were ugly. So, <clears throat> they are written in two parallel columns, and I'm going to show you here. I have it here in a copy. Let me see if I find it. Oh, right here. Please pass it on. I have three pieces here. I'm going to keep one. Um, okay, I think the three of them are highlighted. Yes. Yeah. One. Two. And the book of Esther, when you open it, is the ten names of the sons of Haman appear in this order. Okay? It's like a two columns. Is the original Hebrew, the original book of Esther? Yes. A book uh, more than 2,300, 2,400 years ago. <coughs> um, around that time. The names of the ten sons of Haman are initially prominent. They are written in two parallel columns, a highly unusual configuration, other O-D-D-E-R, still, is the fact that three letters in the list following an unexplained halachic tradition are written very small. So remember, in Hebrew, there is no minor letters or capital letters. There is no commas, dots, parentheses, nothing like that. It's just consonants, and all of them are the same size, except letters like Lamed that goes up the line, or Nun, Sofit, or uh, Kuf, etc. But all the letters are the same size. There is no minor or capital letters. Okay? But in this list, there are three letters that are, uh, how do you say, uh, minimized? Mm -hmm. Lowercase. Huh? Lowercase? Kind of like a lowercase, but in Hebrew there is no lowercase. So. Yeah. But they are like, uh, made, they are written like this big. That is not normal. This is not a grammatical issue. This is something that is the word of Hashem. It's the word of God. The Torah from beginning to end, from Bereshit all the way through the end, the book of Revelation for us, okay, is supernatural. It's amazing when you read it in the Hebrew. <clears throat> so, Following an unexplained halachic tradition and written very small and one very large. So there is one that is like a capital and three small. Did you find them? Yeah, right here. You got it, the last one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is by by Itzata. It's the last name of this guy. <laughs> By Tzata, beautiful name. <clears throat> so you can pick for your grandson. No, don't do that. <laughs> um, okay, where am I? So, written very small, one very large. Okay. The large letter is the Hebrew character for the number six. Pay attention to this. It's the letter Vav. That big letter that you see. Okay. That would be this. Okay, it's, it's, you see it's enlarged. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have the three small, this one, the letter Taf, the letter Chin, and the letter Zayin. Actually, the letter Taf appeared twice, but we don't count it because already we have Taf, Chin, Zayin. They are written in a small way that is unusual in the Bible, but this is the original Hebrew. And the Vav that is large, like a capital letter. For the last son of Haman. So, <clears throat> the large letter, the last letter that you saw, the big one, 
Remember, Hebrew letters are numbers. Are numbers too. The letter Vav is the, the large letter is the number six. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav is number six. And number six represents man. Man was created the sixth day. Remember? Six, 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 because it's number of men. Six represents men in, in, in the Torah. Okay? Uh, the small letters added together. It's amazing. When you, when you take the math, yield the number 707. 707. <coughs> when, you, when you take the three, the three small letters, when you do your math, the value is 707. Okay? If the large letter is taken to refer to the millennium, so because we are like, uh, <clears throat> um, I, I was married in 1,089. <laughs> okay? So when you do a legal document, you don't write 89. It was, it was 1,000, 1,089. No, 19. I'm sorry. What am I saying? Please help me. You know, you are like, that is another oddity. Isn't that an oddity? Uh, yes. I'm testing you. Uh, 1989. Obviously, the one is for 1,000. Okay. Um, 989 is the rest of the... The date, okay? If the letter is taken to refer the last letter to the millennium and 707 to the year in the millennium, something fascinating emerges. According to Jewish reckoning, the present year would be 5,762. That will give us in the Hebrew biblical calendar that will give us the year 5,762. If you, if you, if you, is this hard for you to grasp all this info? Watch the video again. Okay? It's a commandment. <laughs> <laughs> now, the present year is 5,762. The year 5,707 slash the 707 year in the 6th millennium was the year when we know in the Gregorian calendar was 1946. 1945, Second World War ended. But the trial of Nuremberg, when these evil guys were hanged, they had to wait a few months. And they were hanged in 1946. Mm -hmm. oh. That is 5707, just as the four Hebrew letters that are unusual in the list of the names of these 10 first Nazis mm -hmm. thousands of years ago. Wow. Wow. The 707 in the year 6th millennium was the year we know as 1940, 1946. When then sworn enemies of the Jews, peop, Jewish people were hanged in Nuremberg, just as the 10 others had been in Shushan more than 2,000 years earlier. The book of Esther, chapter 9, verse 13, <clears throat> moreover, refers to the hanging of Haman's song in the future tense. It's not this amazing? After the event had been recounted, presaging, it might seem some hanging yet to happen.
To believe in Jews, the Holocaust or the Hashoah was the tip of an unimaginable, unimaginable iceberg of evil stretching far and deep into the past even as one of its ugly tips puncture the relative peace of the modern world. And so, as we prepare to celebrate Purim, the downfall of the Amalekite Haman, especially these days, when Jew hatred has once again made itself manifest in the world, we will do, we will do well to ponder that the evil he represents might have been defeated at times throughout history, but it has not yet been vanquished. <clears throat> Rabbi Abi Shafran serves as a public affairs director for Agudat Israel of America. I don't know. Uh, I have so much stuff here to share with you guys. <clears throat> Do you know that for many, for many centuries, the Jewish people have been trying to prove a point that the Hamalekites, that according, according when you, you study your, your Bible, mm -hmm. you see that Hashem told uh, King Saul mm -hmm. through the prophet Shmuel, to get rid of all the Amalekites. No mercy. Children, pregnant, women, elderly, you name it. Even the animals. Why the animals? Well, there are many reasons why the animals. Remember, back then, the practice of... There are children here, I can't even mention the word, mm. for respect of the... Young girls, yeah. But you know what I'm talking about? All this perversion, yes? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so everything must go. But children, oh, God is evil. The God of the Old Testament was evil. The God of the New Testament is love. Have you heard that? Yes. Get out of here. <laughs> God is the same. Hashem is the same creature. Yesterday, for, uh, today, and forever, and he never changes. It's the same. And believe me, if he has to do something similar today, he will do it. He's always right. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And I believe that this is what must happen in order to finish this crazy stuff because all these mm -hmm. peace treaties, we've been for thousands of years dealing with this stuff. Well, King... Uh, Saul thought he was more merciful than, than God, mm -hmm. and he said, "Why well, let the king, a God, alive? You know, so he's so cool. Mm -hmm. He's very cool to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Look at his his ponytail, and you know, <laughs> particular that flag of colors. You know, it's, he's cool. Yeah. And well, how he left uh, descendants? How he, you know, mm -hmm. his seed? We don't know." But the, we know that Haman was a descendant of the Amalekites. That's why in the book of Esther, he's called Haman the Agagite, descendant actually from the lineage of Agag. Not only Amalekites, but descendant of the evil king of Amale uh, Amalekites, back then when King Saul was a king. Yeah? So, <clears throat> God said everything must go. And God knows. And because Saul was disobedient, 500 years after, here comes one of the descendants of the Amalekites that wants to obliterate of the Jewish people. If God wouldn't have, if Saul How can I put it? If Saul would have been obedient to God, mm -hmm. we would have never had the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. The seeds of hatred 
the irrational hatred because envy, jealousy, shows some people that hurts to envious and jealous people. Yes, we are the chosen people, yes. And it, it has cost us everything. <laughs> chosen, why? Because God gave us a responsibility to shine in this world, not because we are better than anybody. <clears throat> Only in that sense, the Jews are chosen. Mm -hmm. But we are as bad as the most horrible person on this planet and as good as the most good person on this planet. <clears throat> so God knew. He said, everything must go. Because I see, if you don't do this, 500 more years, you're going to be obliterated. And if you are obliterated, the Messiah will never come. Just think about it. You see, God, he's, he's more intelligent than us. Smarter than us. Yeah. So then we have the Romans, the emperors, then we have the popes. We have the whole history, the programs in Russia, you know, the, the British in 12th century, you know, blaming the Jews for everything, the Black Plague. All the people are dying in Europe, you know, half of the population die in Europe. Oh, and they turn to the Jews. So why the Jews don't die? Oh, they are doing magic. Mm. We need to kill the Jews in Europe. Yeah, they are the ones to blame because I saw one of the Jews dropping some poison in the wells. And that is why we had the Black Plague. That's the, 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 the European history. Mm. That the Jews poisoned the, the, the water. That's why millions of people die in Europe. Mm. We have to blame the Jews. I mean, every single empire has been creating all this same spirit of Amalek. Amalek. Yes. And then, here it comes, 80 years ago, Hitler. Mm. The Christ killers. <laughs> and you know that, I'm not going to extend how I wish we can spend hours here. We can, we can talk more maybe next weekend. But next weekend is for fun. Okay? And we need to mock on Haman. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ooh. Boo. Boo. <laughs> oh, yes. A lot of people say, you, the Jews, you are not supposed to, you are not, you are not allowed to mock on, on people that die. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. Thank God. One less. Vamanos. <laughs> yeah. People like us, uh, people like them, I'm sorry, they don't deserve any respect. The Torah is very clear. You give respect to those that deserve respect. Yep. Don't tell me that Hitler deserves a monument and respect. My honors. No. It's garbage. Look at what the Talmud, and I'm going to try to start closing this because there is so much information. I know that you were expecting, you know, like last year we studied the book of Esther. And, but I think this is important because uh, this is like an awakening for us. Mm -hmm. huh? The, we, the book of Esther is, repeats itself every single year in front of our noses. The Talmud, there is a tractate in the Talmud. The Talmud doesn't have chapters, it's, it's tractates, kind of like a, separated by <clears throat> a certain number of pages. And the tractate, and please, I'm going to give you the, 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 tra the tractate. Look for it, and you're going to find It's amazing because today we have the technology. To prove what I'm about to read, what I have in this note. <clears throat> Look what we found in the Talmud. Actually, in the Gemara. Okay? The Gemara is part of the Talmud. And, and when I quote things like this, remember, even though I'm a Jew, I'm not approving that everything quoted in the Talmud is something that we need to... Uh, observe or you know um, or, or even appropriate or uh, there are some things that are a little embarrassing <laughs> so just be careful but there are some good good things there. the the Talmud tractate Megillah remember the book of Esther is in the Hebrews Megillah Esther Megillah mm -hmm. uh, the, the scroll of Megillah uh, Megillah uh, with double L and H at the end. 
the number of the tractate is 6B. Please find it. And you're going to be amazed. You're going to find it. Now, I'm going to give you this. <clears throat> as far as I know, and I have read all kinds of sources in history, maybe I'm missing one. The human error is always there, you know. Mm -hmm. This is just something that I, I, I have done my research. But the name Germany, I, I taught this, remember? Time ago. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the name Germany or Germania didn't exist in ancient history. Actually, the Bismarck, the Miss Bismarck was a guy that uh, he had the dreams to unify Germany, you know, and become the greatest empire, you know, on the planet. And it sounds familiar to you? This guy was back then in 1900s before Hitler took over. Hmm? Bismarck, they call him the great Bismarck. He was a, an amazing uh, warrior, you know, sir. Mm -hmm. You can find it there. He's going to have a funny helmet with like a, mm. like a, Feather. like one of those unicorn no. <laughs> things, you know? not exactly. <laughs> so, but amazingly, the Talmud that was written or completed to be written 15, 1600 years ago, so it's a long time, eh? When, when Germany was not even called Germany, when didn't uh, everything in Europe was just different tribes and confederations, you know, but it was there was no borders, nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The tractate Megillah 6b speaks about a nation. You know what's the name of this nation? This nation is called Germania of Edom. Now, Germania, not Germania, Germany. Mm -hmm. But if you, <clears throat> if you understand that in the etymological, uh, uh, how words uh, develop, yeah. M and N can be interchangeable. Yeah. So with the years, M can change to N or vice versa. Um, <clears throat> Germania of Edom. That this Germania of Edom, who's Edom? Isa. The half brother of Jacob, Israel. Why Isa was always, or the descendants of Isa, was they were always hating and killing Israelites. Mm -hmm. You know who was an Edomite that he converted to Judaism just to please his wife and to gain the favor of the Jews? Herod the Great. Mm -hmm. He was a descendant of Esau. He was an Edomite. Mm -hmm. What a nice guy, eh? <laughs> I call him the Herod the Not-So-Great. Mm -hmm. He was a butcher. He was a bad guy. He killed his own wife. She was a descendant of the Maccabees. Yeah. Kill his sons because he thought my sons are going to take over my kingdom. Oh, wow. But he's called the great because he was an amazing builder. He built gymnasiums and, you know, the, the Twin Towers in New York. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, and he was an athlete. In, but he was not so great. Um... The Talmud says about this nation called Germania of Edom, in other words, listen to this, in other words, this nation, Germania, will be founded by the descendants of Edom. And if you remember, in the Torah says that Esau was red hair, he was a blonde guy. It was whitey. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? Now, please, okay? I'm just giving you what, 
what our research, uh, what we got in the research. I'm not saying that modern Germans are the descendants of Amalekites like some Jews, Orthodox Jews said, for centuries they have said that. Maybe they are right in some way, maybe there is something, but I know friends, this German descendants, beautiful people, they actually they are Christians, mm -hmm. okay, they are beautiful people, nice people, most of uh, a lot of maybe hundreds of thousands of millions here in America, Christians, white people are the sense of Germans. Okay. I'm not saying that, but there is something here, a mystery. There is something that if you study the story of Germany, since Germany became Germany, Germany has been the responsible for First World War, mm -hmm. Second World War, and now we have this crazy guy, uh, Schwab, the leader of the World Economical Forum, the guy that says that all you're going to be eating in 2030 is just insects, and if you own nothing, you will be happier. He actually has a book. You can Google this, his book. He's saying this openly. And you know who, who is his right hand? A guy with his last name, Harari. Harari, that he says, this invention that we, the Jews, invented God. He's a Jewish guy. Mm -hmm. He said, we are gods. And we're going to prove to everyone that we are gods. We know where, it, what is our capacity to prove that there is no God. Mm -hmm. A Jewish guy is the right-handed of the, this guy, Shuav. And Shuav is determined to enslave humanity by 2030. No more public property, no more nothing. Nobody is gonna own anything. Where do you think all this crazy stuff coming from? Gender ideology, race ideology, uh, all this stupid stuff from these people. More confusion, more, more destruction, why? COVID and all these things, they are behind the scenes. This is not conspiracy, please, okay? They are behind all this to keep us distracted. That is why even the salary in America is just made uh, the, the, the minimum, you know? Mm -hmm. So people can barely make it. So they can get so uh, caught in distractions mm -hmm. and not have any one minute to think about life. Things that really matter in life. Mm -hmm. So this Schwab, Karl Schwab, Karl, I think it's. It's a German guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he is the leader of this movement, the 2030 Agenda. And it's not just me saying this. Actually, I have a book written by um, <clears throat> they've always been accusing this guy of uh, sensationalist. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he's, a, he's a senator from Kentucky, a congressman, uh, Ron Paul. Have you heard of Ron Paul? Okay. You have people in the Congress and in, 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 in the Senate here in America saying that this Karl Schwab, this German guy, what he's saying, he can accomplish this if we don't stop this. I mean, it's not me, please. The German guy. Working together with the Jewish guy, a God denier. Harari. If you find him, he's a bald guy. Yeah. Yeah, have you seen I looked, him? I looked him up right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's a horrible guy. Mm -hmm. Despicable, stinky, fetid. They, people like that die, I make a big party, like in the Book of Esther. We made a big party, mm -hmm. honestly. We are here suffering, we are here working hard, we are here raising families, we are here doing what is right, we don't, we don't participate in corruption, we don't... We don't steal, we don't kill, we don't lie, we don't do all these be beautiful things that are beautiful for them, okay? Mm -hmm. Trying to elevate this world and they're trying to destroy this world. Mm -hmm. This is the real fight we have. Yes, dark entities behind these people, yes, but these people are allowing to get these entities into their lives. 
So this nation is going to be called Germania of Edom that will have intentions. Look at, actually, you, you have to read this if you find the, tra the tractate in the, in the Talmud. That will have intentions to destroy the world. That is what the Talmud said. Germany became a nation in 1871. Finally, the Bismarck, this gentleman, unified Germany. And you know what? Amazingly, like I said, how I wish we can spend here the rest of our night. I have so much to share with you guys from history, from the Torah, from... <clears throat> the town will continue saying, and there are 300 princes. Princes? Male? Princes? Princes. Mm -hmm. In Germania. Now remember, the name Germania, German, Germany didn't exist back then. No. Where did the sages that wrote this get this idea? That in Germania, or Germany, there are 300 princes. Well, listen to this. This is the last quote I gave you from this note. This is history. After the Middle Ages, England, France started to emerge as potential uh, powers in the planet. Germany was little behind uh, England and France. So German, uh, Great Britain and France, they were ahead of Germany. You know where Germany was back then when England and France were ahead as, as being fighting for the future of power in the world? Germany, that wasn't called Germany yet, <clears throat> still was a puzzle of 300 individual states. <laughs> and the Talmud says, the Germania, there were 300 princes, the founders of Edom. I found it right here. You found it? Can you read it, please? <coughs> English. 6B. 6B. This is Germania of the Edom, Germany, which is near the land of Edom, Rome, as if the Germans would go forth. They would destroy the entire world. And Rabbi Hama Bar Hanea said, There are 300 young princes with crowns tied to their heads in Germania of Edom. And three and, and three are three hundred and sixty-five chieftains in Rome. Every day these go out to battle against those, and one of them is killed. They are preoccupied with a, appointing a new king in his place. Okay, that's fine. You hear that? That's the Talmud. This is amazing. Because it seems like, a, wait a minute, it seems like a, one of the prophets in, in the Torah and the Bible escaped and, and he wrote that, you know, in the Talmud. No. Somehow there is a prophetic ingredient in that scripture. Because what you just heard, I didn't mention this. <clears throat> if you read history, there was a point in history when the throne of the Roman Empire that remember the empire of the emperors ceased to exist in the fifth century but the roman empire continued existing through the catholic christian imperial church through the popes yes. mm -hmm. so rome this is history guys Rome as a military force, as a political force, ceased to exist in 5th century. When the Visigoths, the Gothics, the Vandals, the Unos, that all of them were tribes, German tribes. 
They got into Rome and they destroyed Rome. Rome destroyed within, you know, but they took advantage of that. So, Rome continued existing through the popes. Politic, now not military, but political, religiously political, continue existing. Yeah? But there was a time in the Middle Ages when, listen to this, when Germany, <clears throat> after uh, Middle Ages, when Germany became <coughs> what was called the Sacred Holy Roman Empire. The throne of the Roman Catholic Empire switched dominion and it moved to Germany. I don't know if you knew this. And then the fight between Rome trying to recover the power, okay? Because religion is power, guys. <laughs> religion is power. They've been keeping the people distracted, you know, with those infusions of religion to keep you away from the knowledge of the Torah, the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they know religion is power, manipulation, you know, fear. Yeah. So we need religion back in Rome and the fight between the sacred, holy Roman Empire that was now based in Germany. Rome and Germany fighting for the power now. Is what the Talmud says. In Rome, okay, and um, and Germania will be fighting, mm -hmm. killing each other. Mm -hmm. Insane, totally insane. Like I said, when I read this, I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, this should be a printed error. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not. And then I go to I Google it. I Google this this quotation from the Talmud. I say, no, 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 no. This is okay. This is everything is it matches. You see how this gentleman in Rome now he's so thirsty for power and unifying the world in one religion because they know religion is power, and they know, they know they have one thing in mind. You know what's the one thing they have in mind? To kill us all the Jews and all the Jewish lovers. Hamalekite is still well and alive more than ever before. And just think about this. 80 years ago we had the Holocaust of the Hashoah in Europe. 80 years after, we have about the same number of Jews killed here in America. Killed in Europe, here in America. And Jews are still blamed for everything. Mm. Mm. Grandma got food. Eh, the Jewish fault. My little par parrot died. Ah, oh, the Jew that would not be It's his fault. Yeah. So, Amalekite, Amalekite is still is still uh, alive, and. Um, and I like what the book of Esther ends uh, saying that Mardochai never bowed his knee before Haman. And you know that that phrase in Hebrew is in the future sense too, tense? Mm -hmm. In Hebrew it says, and Mardochai will never bow his knee before Haman. It's not in present tense. It's not in, pa in past tense. Yeah. It's in the future form. Wow. And Mardochai will never bow and he will never bend his knees before him. Who's Mardochai? Every one of us. Every one of us. We will never bow, we will never bend our knees as Haman was <clears throat> demanding from Mardochai. I have so much to share one more time, but I think I'm going to stop here. If you can just take a picture of this. Order, order these books. Just have fun with this and learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You know what uh, Am Amalek means? Amalek. Amalek. Huh? Aleman. 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 Aleman.
people yes. usually. Yeah. Am is people. And Lech, it comes from this idea of... Um, have you seen the snuffers, tongs that you use to suffocate the flame of... Mm -hmm. For example, the book of Exodus, the book of Shemot talks about this <coughs> snuffers, tongs. <clears throat> that you use to suffocate the flame of a candle. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the book of Shemot talks about one of the utensils of the temple, of the Mishka, was the snuffers, that they were, uh, the root word of that uh, snuffer. You know what it is? Mm -mm. It's the root word of the word Amalek. Mm -hmm. Okay. Snuffers. Like to extinguish. To, huh? to snuff out the life of the No, but think about the meaning. Yeah, he's snuffing out the life of the Jews. Yes, but also the idea of a tongue. And the Hebrews call snuffer tongue. The same root word of Amalek. That's why Amalek, lek, means a tongue that strikes. A tongue that strikes. You know what I have here? Well, the media will be more than happy to continue promoting these lies. This was a novel written by the friends, a French a novelist. He just wrote a, a soap opera written book. And this was placed in the hands of evil people. And they, this is what is called the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. And this supposedly is how the Jews are going to take over the world. The Jews are evil. And the Jews, this book... Well, this explains the story of this book. Okay? It's not other thing, but Julius Streicher, the Amalekite, huh? making propaganda, using his tongue, his hitting tongue, tongue, to bring propaganda against the Jewish people in the world. Yeah? So whenever you hear about this, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, this actually is a book. You know who was the first guy that promoted this, this anti-Semitic, uh, horrible, horrible literature? Henry Ford. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the guy that built your car, your car, your car. Huh? <laughs> I shall bless you and keep you. Henry Ford took it. Because somebody gave it to him, he said, wow, this is awesome, wow, this novel, it seems like, it seems to me like, these are the Jews, they just want to take over the world. <laughs> and he took it, and he went to Germany, it's modern history. He went to Germany, he met uh, Hitler, and he said, look what I got, <clears throat> look what I got for you, this is another excuse to get rid of all the Jews, because Henry Ford was uh, an evil guy. We don't owe one thing to that guy. I don't care what people say about one of the best. We don't owe one thing to this gentleman. This, they are the scum of humanity. He just hated the Jews. Yeah. So, and Hitler said, let me see. Eh, it looks cool, but you know what? I don't like French literature. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it's translated to English. We can translate it to Germany. Nah, eh. It didn't work in Germany, so somebody else in Germany got a copy and took it to Russia. And Russia is where, when the Tsar, the, the Tsar, the kings of Russia fell under, under the, the, the communists, okay, uh, the Bolsheviks, uh, they took it seriously. And they spread it all over the world. This is truth. You see how ignorance can kill us? When this book was written by a guy, a, a, a modern director of uh, soap opera in Hollywood. Yeah. And this propaganda uh, is the one to blame for the death and the torture of hundreds and thousands, if not millions of Jews mm -hmm. since this stuff was written. Amalek. The people that hit with the tongue, the people that snuffs the fire or wants to limit the light or the, or the fire of the Hebrew, the Jewish people. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so,
so much to talk. Oh, but uh, I think it's enough for tonight. Maybe we can continue next week. Um, uh, thank you so much for your assistance. And I want to hear from you now. Comments. Comments. Somebody has comments? You might have comments. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting. Um, this is new on this. Yeah. No, go ahead. Um, Sorry. It's just you can turn it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah.